Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube and I am coming back to you on this September the 20th, 2017 with a belated update video. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had intended on coming back a week later but it just didn't happen. Um, and then I guess I'll get into that real quickly. Um, last week I had the death cold. Um, I'm not sure. There are two possible routes that this death cold traveled to get to me. Um, either um, it was from spending time with a four-year-old who just started preschool um, at the at a football game, or I got it just from watching Emily C's floss tube video where she had the death cold. Not sure. Uh, at some point or another, I got death cold, and it was not fun. Um, I can't say that I had it as bad as Emily did, but it was rough. And it was complicated by the fact that I was, I had an allergic reaction. So, you know, there's all sorts of fun stuff going on there. Whatever. And then, uh, I was sunburned because... When you're planning for a football game and you're like, oh, it's only going to be 70 sunscreen, I didn't even think about it. So I had this really cute, like really cute sunburn on my forehead, which you can kind of still see. It's still a little pink. My nose, tops of my cheeks, primarily. Um, my arms from about here down, um, still a little discolored. <laughs> And then one very cute, very adorable patch right here because the jersey that I was wearing was a v-neck. <laughs> I tell you guys. Um, so yeah, it was it was a week last week. Um, so I'm back here today, <laughs> finally feeling healthy. My skin and such is finally coming back from this allergic reaction. And I can cover things <laughs> to hide the sunburn. Real cute. But it's okay. Um, so yeah, so it's been a few weeks. And um, it's been an interesting few weeks. I have said it before, like, but there are some times where I sit down to film and I know that it's going to be a long video. I just know. Um, and then there are days like today where I don't even know, like I have, I have some things to talk about, but I just don't know, <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take. So we'll just, we'll just go with it. Um, but what I do have to talk to you about, I have, uh, some Q and A to go over. Um, I pulled some of the old questions and I have finishes galore. There are finishes in every category. Woohoo! Um, and then, of course, I have my whips. Um, I've got some purchases, and I have um, books and knitting. Because, like I told you guys last time, I'm only talking about books and knitting when I've got finishes, and I've got finishes for both of those categories. So. That's pretty great. I mean, I might as well. It's been three weeks, right? Like, I should have been. Anyway, um, so yeah, should we go ahead and get started? I think we should. Now let's start talking about some cross stitch things. So we're going to go in chronological order of when I have worked on things. Um, and we're going to start with my heaven and earth design. So when I spoke to you guys last, uh, I was working on page five and I didn't have a whole lot left to do to finish out the page. Um, so here's a preview of what the design will look like finished. For the first time in forever, it's not on my frame. How did all my minders get 
flipped upside down. There we go. So this is Faces of Fairy 201 by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And preview here of what this looked like last time when you saw it. I am stitching this on 25 count Lugana, one over one full cross. And oh my gosh, I got threads everywhere. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, this is a disaster. There we go, that's better. Okay, so like I said, I had about 1,500 stitches to go, give or take, on that page. So I finished up that page there. Um, that I finished that up the, let me see, Labor Day Monday. Um, I ended up not going to the West Virginia game. Um, Danny went without me. And so I stayed home and I stitched and I watched the game on TV and yeah. So that was, that was pretty nice. So I got that page finished up on Labor Day. Then um, I took a break, um, mostly because we were out of town last weekend, but also because I just kind of wanted a break from this. So then last weekend was a pretty great opportunity to pull this back out again. Um, since we were home because the uh, Virginia Tech game was an away game at East Carolina. Um, we were home this weekend, and so I thought, well, it's been a couple weeks since I worked on this. I better put some time in. And so I got started on page 7 there. And this black right here, that's the bottom of the pattern. That's it. Reached the bottom. I didn't get a whole lot done last weekend, as you can see. Uh, just about 900 stitches or a little bit more. Um, Stitch and Mommy talked about this in her latest update video about having to get reacclimated with the design and how in three days it's almost like by the time you reach the end of the rotation you've finally gotten into a groove but then it's time to switch anyway. And that really happened to me with this, um, this go around. It took me a long time to get into a groove with this and it's not high confetti or anything. So it shouldn't have been that much of a struggle, but it really was. Um, so, yeah. So I might have to reevaluate, um, but I'm going to talk about this more in plans here in just a little bit. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. But I did reach the bottom of that page. So here she is all together. She's looking mighty good. I haven't measured yet. Um, but when I measured up top here, when I finished this page, <laughs> it's like way less than nine inches. And as advertised, one over one on 25 count, it's supposed to be nine inches square. Um, obviously the stitching and my tension changes that a little bit. So that could be, uh, I mean, that's, that's probably the cause of, of the shrinking. I'm really hoping that it's going to stay square. Um but I guess we'll see. Yeah, see, it already looks taller than it is wide, but all of these other stitches are gonna make a change in that tension too, so we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so I finished up that page and I could have carried on and gotten started immediately on page seven but I decided not to, um, and it was pretty good timing because it was time to work on the uh, my Chatelaine. So, uh, as you guys know, in the first week of September, we were celebrating Sitch and Mommy Sarah. Uh, we were celebrating her birthday with Chatelaine projects, and so I decided to pull out my Autumn Fairy. So you'll be seeing a preview here of what this will look like finished, as well as what it looked like the last you saw it made some pretty good progress. Um, and this is on a, well, that's the back. I'm trying to show you the fabric. And it's not coming through quite right. That's closer. It is uh, 32 Count Belfast in Mellow by Picture This Plus. It really is got more of a peachy tone to it. That looks really golden. Um, but it's more, no, nope, that doesn't make a difference. It's really more like, um, peachy. So here is the progress that I made. Um, I worked on this for three days, I want to say, and 
Other Than Beads, part one is finished. And that is just, well, it's not quite finished. Um, so the part one is just this, this top here. It also includes the border that goes all the way down and around, which I haven't done yet because I don't like doing those borders, so I do them little bits at a time. And then I got started on part two. And as you can see, I made some pretty good progress there for part two. But this is kind of weird. <laughs> okay, so part two features this fairy. Um, and so I got started on her wing and um, hair and face and got into the bodice a little bit. So let me see if I can fold this up and bring it in close so that you guys can see it. And if not, then I will take a picture and insert it. Um, her face itself is one over one and it's charted like this. Her face is one over one, right there. Her chest and neck is two over two. And it's charted like that, y'all. Which weirds me out, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It changes the texture of the skin and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. So I did some hunting, I did some digging online to try to look up try to look this up and see if other people have changed it or what it looks like if it's done as it's supposed to because the model is really just a computer generated image you don't really get a true essence of what the thing looks like and I saw somebody who stitched it as charted and it looks fine it doesn't look as weird <laughs> as it feels <laughs> just to put it, to put it mildly it doesn't look it doesn't look strange um, so tentatively I'm sticking with it because Martina uses different weights she uses she charts with one over one and two over two to give dimension so I'm gonna try it <laughs> I'm gonna try it and if I hate it then I'll try to rip it out so for now, that's what that is. Anyway, oh. um, so it was a blast to work on her for even for just a little bit um, to make some progress on her. This was my 2016 New Year new start. So I'm averaging a part and a half every two years. So this should be done in approximately 2022. <laughs> but that's okay. So there's that. Loving it. Um, and had a blast stitching on Chatelaine with everybody. Um, Sarah got her Winter Wonderland sampler started, and I know that, um, I believe that Lisa from Lisa Stitching and Such joined in a little bit, and so did Anne from Ann P, and Belinda started hers, and so it was just like, it was all very cool. Global Chatelaine stitching. Pretty great. That's a way to start a birthday. Oh. Following that, um, I started to feel my rotation come to an end. Like I was, I was ready to switch. Um, and in the meantime, I watched a whole lot of a stitch too far videos. Um, I had, I had gotten too far behind, um, and I had to play catch up. And Ingeborg is a great inspiration for me. She makes me want to finish things. Um, like there's no tomorrow. Like I just want to, I just want to finish things after watching her videos. Um, and so I got a bug in my ear to, to finish something. And so I had a look at my whips and I had a look at what was close to finishing. And what I came to was Double Double by the Prairie Scholar. And so you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like during my whip parade. And I stitched this on 32, 30, excuse me, 30 count parchment linen uh, by Weeks Dye Works. And I didn't bring the chart because I forgot to, um, but that's okay because it's finished. How about that? So, all done. <laughs> it looks so good on camera. Up close, I'm going to bring it in close here in a second so you guys can see how bad this coverage is. Um, but... At least right there, it looks it looks inky black. It looks like I painted it rather than stitched it, which is good. So, yeah, so I got a bug in my ear to finish this thing. 
And then I wanted to, what I wanted to do was um, work on it on uh, the 13th for dark 13 stitching. Um, I wanted to finish it that day, but I was so sick. <laughs> I was so sick that I couldn't even stitch uh, last Wednesday. Um, so, And last Wednesday was the 13th, of course. Of course, I can't stitch on the day that I wanted to stitch on this, but that's all right. Um, instead, I spent six hours watching So You Think You Can Dance from my backlog. Anyway, so I'm going to bring this in close so that you can see how atrocious the coverage is. It's really not that bad. It was a lot worse stretched on my Millennium. Um, this is 30 count linen from Weeks Dye Works, which is a loose weave linen. I don't like Weeks Dye Works linen. Um, and 30 count ain't my jam. So, yeah, this was just a, a recipe for disaster. Um, I did, so it's actually charted with DMC 3371 instead of the, instead of the black. Um, I used Anchor 403, so I took it dark. <laughs> I was like, I want to paint it, paint it black. Um, and so that's what I did. And then there are two other colors called for this orange and then the gray. Um, I did make one other very small change. These skulls, um, their eyes are supposed to be stitched in orange. And I kind of wanted to just leave them empty. I thought they looked more skull-like without eyes. I don't know. So, so I just decided to stick with that. And then I, I wanted so badly to put my signature there because it's just, it's just a built-in spot for it. It would be so great. But legit, it would look like the poop emoji. Um, because that's my signature down there in the corner. <laughs> like I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it underneath the cat. So I didn't. Um, I put it on the outside and um, I did it in that gray color because I kind of just wanted it to, to not be so noticeable. And so there is that. I have FFO plans for this. Um, McKenna from Every Stitch Counts uh, she advised that I burn it, um, and as much as I would like to do that, um, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. What I told McKenna was, <laughs> FFO, that's funny. I don't do that. <laughs> this is about as finished as we're getting. But anyway, so, so there's that. All done. So I went down a whip. For the moment. Okay, so I finished that up Friday? Yeah, I think it was Friday. And uh, then I went back to Faces of Fairies where I worked on that page seven um, over the weekend. Then, come Monday, I was ready to switch. Um, I wasn't ready to. I had finally gotten into a groove with my hate, but I wanted to reach some of my other goals for the month. And one of the other goals and this one has been calling to me the loudest from my year of whips pile. Um, so I decided to pull it out on Monday. And that is Electra by Nora Corbett. And so looking at this, I mean, she's very small. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I'm going to set a goal. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a goal. And my goal is to finish the black by the end of September. And I was giving myself this three day rotation. And then I sat down to stitch and I went, wow, there's a lot of black in this. <laughs> I have a lot of black left to do. Um, and I'm not stitching for eight hours a day every day. So yeah, that, that has gone swiftly out the window. Um, I'm making as much progress on it as I can on the black, but today is my last day with this project, so yeah, we'll see. Um, and I have stitched enough on this and I've gotten into a really good groove to where it's okay, like I'm feeling pretty good about, about moving on. Um, and so I'll insert a preview here of what this looked like the last two saw it. 
This I am stitching on a 32 count milk chocolate linen by Wichelt. It is the called for fabric. And we're gonna see right through it. Can you see what's going on there without getting dizzy? That's pretty good. So I made a hell of good progress. <laughs> it's just the black is not gonna get done today. Um, so yeah, so uh, all the black up to this point, love it. And I have subbed out for Anchor Black for this. Um, and so that's why you're getting that inky, inky black again. Apparently all I do is stitch black. Um, so I've come to the decision that at least through October, if I can stick with it, I'm going to do, um, on Wednesdays we stitch black. Um, because I've got a lot of black going on in my pieces right now, and it being the Halloween season, kind of makes sense. So on Wednesdays, I'm going to stitch black, um, and I'm going to have fun with it. So there's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm going to have a hard time putting her down. I'm ready to put her down, but I'm going to have a hard time with it because, yeah, Mira stitching, it's just... There's something different about it. There's something different about Nora's style. Uh, Needleminder's here. Jeweled Spider from Gina's Unique Boutique. I uh, showed that last time. And then Pumpkin Spice from Julia Nifty Needle Nannies. So yeah, so there's Electra. That's where she stands currently. Um, and She's in my plans for October, but I'll talk about October plans a little bit more seriously next time. Okay, one last project, and it's a new start. I made a new start yesterday. So here's, here's kind of what happened. <laughs> um, it was sort of like a bunch of things just came together, and so it was time to make this new start. Um... I have wanted to go a little bit more mobile with my stitching. I want to be able to take my stitching traveling. And, you know, we're spending a lot of time this fall in Blacksburg. And so I just would like to be able to take stitching with me. But my setup, I mean, it's 25 pounds worth of stuff. Just so much stuff that I just don't feel like lugging for a three-day weekend. So, you know, I've got my Lowry and my Millennium and all of the stuff, and I don't want that anymore. So I've had a thought that I need to teach myself how to stitch on just a Q-snap without a stand or anything like that. I'm trying to relearn how to get more basic. I have started watching more floss tubers that stitch in hand, and oh my goodness, do I wish I could be all. Um, Sarah from Stitch and Mommy and Chelsea and Priscilla, um, I wish that I could do what y'all do, but I can't. I don't know if it's because I'm painfully left-handed or if, I don't know, but regardless, I might be just attention snob. Anyway, I want to be more mobile. Then, yesterday happened to be Miss Mel's birthday. Miss Mel, who, um does have a channel here on floss tube um and films when she can um yesterday was her birthday and i happen to know that she has a particular appreciation for this um subject and then <laughs> because the timing was just right i was getting ready to take my lunch and i got a notification on my phone pam's Crafty Corner is uh, um, live streaming. She's doing a stitch with me. And I was like, hmm. Well, this is just kind of all working out perfectly. I'm going to start this thing that I wanted to start, but also kind of celebrate Miss Mel's birthday. Um, and I'm going to start it on my Q-snap, but I'm only going to stitch it on my Q-snap. 
without my without my stand. Um, and I'm gonna stitch with Pam and and crew and everybody that was there. So it worked out beautifully to just make the start. So I did. Um, and so that start is. I haven't been able to do this in forever. Show you guys what's currently on my cue snap. Um, so. I started the Wise Owl by Dimensions that I showed you guys uh, last time. I almost said last week. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I got that started and I started in the top left corner. Um, I subbed out the fabric for a 28 count antique white cashew linen. I didn't want to use the 14 count Ada that came with it. Um, so yeah, and my owl needle minder here who lost an eyeball. That was very sad. Uh, his eyeball popped out. But yesterday was also uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day. I don't know if it's national or international. I imagine international because pirates in international waters. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of fitting because it kind of looks like he needs an eye patch for Talk Like a Pirate Day. So, so there's that. So I got a nice little start and um, I had some drama. <laughs> while we were doing the stitch with me. I uh, lost a needle and then I found it and I had a frog and yeah, but I got started. And so this is just half stitch but with four strands, which is fun. Um, so yeah, so I'll work on that here and there and try to be able to stitch more mobily. Okay, so let's talk plans very briefly. Um, no plans have really changed. Um, tomorrow I am starting Bridge Where She Waits by Heaven and Earth Designs and artwork by Stephanie Pumman Law um, for the September Start Sal in Full Coverage Fanatics. Um, and then this weekend, um, I am actually not going to the football game this weekend. Um, it's going to be roughly 83 degrees and sunny and I don't do well in long sleeves in the heat. Um, I have a propensity for passing out when I get too warm, so I'm just going to bunker down in the cool air and pray for fall <laughs> and for cooler weather. And um, Thor and I will watch the game here, and Dandy's going to go to the game. It's Old Dominion, so um, I'm not feeling particularly bothered by not going so so there's that um i will be there next weekend uh next weekend is clemson and so i yeah not missing that um it's going to be a tough one but that's okay going to be there um and it's a night game so i don't have to worry so much about being so hot uh, so yeah so there's that okay so um my plans Sorry, squirrel. Um, I'm going to work on Faces of Fairy this weekend. And I'm going to try to finish that page, page seven, this weekend. Danny's not going to be here, so I just have to concern myself with Thor and what I'm eating if I choose to eat. <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but so, so I'm going to work on Faces through Sunday. Then on... Monday, I'm going to go back to Bridge Where She Waits because I would like to give that a full three days of effort and see how far I can get on the first page. Um, Anne and I were joking this morning that I'm going to finish the dragon, like, by tomorrow, which is silly. Of course not. I stitch slower than that. And my mind just goes everywhere. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how far I get. Um, and then on Wednesday... I'm going to probably pull out Electra again because on Wednesdays we stitch black um, or something else. We'll see. There's potential for something else and I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so, um, so that's my tentative plans for now. And then next week, I believe next Wednesday is the last Wednesday before October. So I will talk to you about my October plans. Um, and talk about rotation mm, amendments, shall we say. So Okay, so let's transition over to the things that I have purchased recently. Um, and the first, um, I purchased this a while ago. It was out of stock, so Julie at Nifty Nomad has got it back in stock. 
and I have a little lady to turkey. I almost said toki because I wanted to say turkey and hokey at the same time. Toki. That doesn't sound like I want it to. Anyway, um, so she's adorable and um, I have planned project for her. Okay, next um, I ordered this through Leslie at Under the Sea Fabrics um, and it is the most recent Mirabilia release, uh, Lady of Mystery. And she's a stunner. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in the background here. I haven't pulled out the chart, but looking at it, I thought that it was black work, but it's it's not. It looks like X's. Uh, this is, yeah, looks like there's a lot going on back there. Um, and um, I almost want to cut it off here. I won't because I think that that looks unfinished, but the wide expanses of one color kind of, eh, not my favorite thing. Um, but, or maybe I'll just stitch her torso, like just this part. Maybe, maybe that's a thing. Maybe I'll do that. Because I like her hair and I like her expression and I like that she's holding those roses, but they kind of look like black work and I like the, her open back dress. So maybe I'll just stitch her torso. That could be fun. Um, and... I also got the specialty threads, um, Black Forest and Sable, both by Karen Waterlilies. Uh, Sable, I believe, is in Gypsy Queen, so I already have a skein of this. And Black Forest was in Persephone. Um, that is not showing up correctly. <laughs> it has a purple tone to it. The different shades are showing up, but the overall feel of the color, yeah, it's much warmer than that. So there's those. And with that, I also got my fabric of the month for August. And for, um, for August, it is Gaia. Um, my subscription is a 32 count Belfast linen in a fat quarter size. So there's Gaia. Gorgeous, soft, pinky, peachy, kind of yellowy. Really, really pretty. Um, yeah, I really like that. It's showing, it's pulling out more of the orange tones on camera. Um, it really has more of a pinky vibe. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good representation. So there's Gaia. And then in the same mail day, um, I opened up my Fabric of the Month from Stephanie, hand dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Again, 32 count Belfast Fat Quarter. Uh, this is Chestnut. And when I first saw the scan of this, I was, I mean, okay, it's nice. Um, but in life, it's like stunning. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, so this is Chestnut. And yeah, that's showing it off pretty good. It's this green, brown, mossy toned wood. I, gosh, just so many descriptive words for it. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. No idea what's going on this, but it's gonna be something gorgeous and hopefully something to pull out those greens because love that. So. So there's that. Oh, obsessed. Okay. Um, next, let's go on to the thing that I think I might start next Wednesday. Um, and uh, I wanted to start it last week, but I don't have fabric for it yet. Operative word. Um, uh, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. <sighs> This thing is so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Let me take the cover out of the plastic. Everybody's talking about this. Everybody's doing it. I really hope that I'm not going to get overwhelmed by the fact that everybody's doing it because I really want to do it. 
really want to stitch it myself. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy. A nice big view of it. Okay, I'm gonna read what it, what it says. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the words. We do lie beneath the grass, in the moonlight, in the shade of the yew tree. They that pass hear us not. We are a friend. They would envy our delight in our grave by glowworm night. Oh God, I love this so much. Um, okay, so real talk for a second. Halloween and I have a sordid history. Um, it's not like I'm, I'm not Halloween gaga crazy. We don't decorate for Halloween. Danny and I, generally speaking, don't get dressed up for Halloween. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it is what it is. We live on the main road in our neighborhood and the kids are not allowed to trick or treat on the neighbor on the main road because um, there's no sidewalks. Um, so we don't get kids that come to the house for Halloween. And even when I was a kid, Halloween, it was kind of iffy um, if we were participating or not. Um, so I, I'm not obsessed with Halloween. And you guys know that the prim style is not generally speaking where I go. I mean, most of everything that I've shown you here today is very modern and I don't know. It's just, it's modern. Prim is not generally speaking my thing, but I wish I could explain why because it would be much easier to explain to myself why I am so in love with this. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe my tastes are changing. Maybe I am becoming more attracted to Halloween and prim style. I do find myself checking out some more Kathy Barrick and Plum Street samplers and um, carriage house samplings and uh, cottage garden samplings and just more prim. So maybe maybe it's just an evolution of my tastes. Or maybe I am embracing my inner witch and she is helping me to see the light. I'm not sure, but I love this. So I didn't have fabric to start it when it immediately when it arrived last week. Um, I pre-ordered it through down Sunshine Lane, as you do, and it arrived last Thursday. I didn't start it because I've been back and forth about fabric. What I have ultimately decided is that I'm going very basic for the fabric. Um, and I'm going uh, Vintage Country Mocha by Zweigart. I'm going to do it um, over 2 on 40 count, I think. Um, because um, I think that that's what I'm going to do because I have also decided what my new year new start is going to be and that is year at Hawk Run Hollow so like I'm just gonna have Hawk Run Hollow everywhere <laughs> it's, it's fine it's totally fine um but so I was going to order a whole yard of the vintage country mocha because that will suffice for both of these projects um so probably that uh I had ordered uh, 36 count flax to do Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. Again, another one that I got last year that sits in my stash and hasn't been started. Um, and I canceled that order because I really just want to do this. <laughs> so anyway, so there's that. So I've been, I joined the Sal group for this. I mean, I've been a part of the Let's All Move to Hawk Run Hollow group for a while, but, um, so I joined the sale for this, and I've just been kind of perusing to see what other people are doing for fabric for this. Some really, really interesting ideas. Some really cool, very cool ideas. And then there was the conversation the other day about where people are starting. Um, and more specifically, Sarah asked Emily where she was starting, and she was like, we're starting in the middle. And when I first saw this, I was like, I'm going to start in the middle too, because... 
it's logical and if I'm gonna embrace the inner witch I might as well work on the witch as well check this out y'all okay just look at that for a second <laughs> I can't do it again <laughs> I can't do it again yet um, two witches they're dropping things into a cauldron over a flame there's bats and cats and pumpkins I can't, <laughs> I can't do it again so I'm gonna have to wait oh wait wrong one I said on the wrong thing I'm gonna have to wait to do the center block and I think that I'm just gonna go up here um, oh my gosh I'm so excited you guys I can't even stand it oh this is gorgeous so yeah this is this is happening soonly as soon as fabric arrives um, and I finally pull the trigger on a yard of vintage country mocha okay last thing that I have currently um, so I don't know what rock I was living under for the last I don't know six months but um, I missed the majority of the beginning of Lisa's Stitching and Such channel and like I I don't know I was living under a rock and I hadn't seen her videos so finally I you know emerged from from my under the rock dwelling and I was like oh I really like this channel so I have been watching her channel from the beginning and she started her channel during year of whips and she showed this design which is one of her year of whips and I went I need that gonna need that um, and of course out of print because Lisa what do we do we want things and so they're out of print <laughs> so um, so I mentioned that to her and then you know time goes by I do some occasionally I do some researches to try to find it it's under several different names it's got it's got a bunch of different names um, and then at some point last week, Lisa messaged me on Instagram. And she was like, somebody is selling it on Stash Unloaded. So I ran, did not walk. I ran, um, which is to say that I just grabbed my phone and pulled it up or whatever, um, to claim it on Stash Unload. And not only did somebody have it available, but they were selling just the chart. And typically speaking, this is a kit through Lenart. Um, but I got just the chart. So that's pretty great because me and kids I mean you know I have a habit of throwing fabric anyway <laughs> so that is lazy afternoon by Lenard and I love this I love this so much because if you want to know what I look like when I was in college when I was in my early 20s late teens early 20s I look like this curled up in a chair reading a book pretty much all the time um, that was me and this I love this so much so this is going to be started now I'm gonna open this up because I just want you guys to see this <laughs> the reverse side of this pamphlet is the chart on four very large pages um, yeah there's a lot going on here, which is fun. Anyway, so so there's that. Love this. Thank you so much to the seller who was parting with it. It was reasonably priced and it made it to me just fine and I'm so excited to, to stitch it. This was printed in 2001 and on the back it's got um, retail suggestion $5.95 pretty wild. So excited. Yay. So that's gonna happen. So like really fun stuff in my stash right now. Um, but that is it for purchases. I okay first things first we're going to talk knitting. I have two finished knits y'all. Crazy pants right? Yeah it's pretty wild. Um, but I just I'm trying to whip down where I can so um, so I'm finishing some things. 
So the first thing that I finished is the Thistle Rambles. And this puppy is heavy. Um, because it's large. So yeah, this is the Thistle Rambles. The designer is Kristen Kapoor. Uh, this was the Through the Loops Mystery Shawl 2016. Um, I haven't woven in the ends yet, so that's why the ends are hanging out everywhere. Um, I knit this out of Shalimar Yarns Breathless, which is a Maryland-based dyer, um, and Breathless is a fingering weight. Um, it is merino, cashmere, and silk. Very luxurious, extremely soft. And the colors that I used are Petal, which is that pink right there, that very soft pink, and Curry, which is this scummy green color that I thought was going to look more yellow, but it's really not. It's not gold at all. Um, I had originally got these yarns to be my wedding colors, and this was going to be like a yay, we're married kind of cast on thing, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty green, and there's a big wide section of it that makes it look really green. Anyway, so uh, the last you saw this, I was in this region right here. And so let me flip this because it will make more sense. Um, so like at the, at the tips of this lace section, where am I? Yeah, like right there. And so there was some garter stitch stripes right there to transition to this pink section with this lace that I cannot wait to block this because this lace is going to look so good blocked out. Um, so it's like these little bobbles. They're not bobbles, but like they, they look like um, they're more solid knitted fabric in amongst a sea of eyelets. And then transition into a feather and fan um, in stripes then the last curry section, and then the pico bind off that took me four days. Four days <laughs> to do that every four stitches. Yeah, that was a lengthy bind off. There were over, did I have over 500 stitches, I think, by the time I reached that point? Um, and in order to do a pico bind off, essentially, you make two stitches to bind off two stitches. Oh, that's not right, but you make two stitches, you bind off four, so you net bind off two. So it's like a six step process to make one little pico. One little pico. Um, but I love it. Um, as I said, this thing is really heavy. I'm gonna put it on over top because no, I am not. That looks really ridiculous. This is going to need blocking to um, really open it up. And so I'll try to do that here before too long. So there it is. This will rambles. Um, I think this came in at just over 600 yards total. Maybe. Or maybe almost 700. Um, so pretty, pretty substantial. So, finished that up, and then I was like, sweet, I like finishing things. <laughs> I really like finishing things that have been on my needles for way too long. So I thought, well, let me pull out my other 2016 mystery shawl uh, that's still on the needles. And so that, um, that is my, what do you call it? Dockside by Alicia Plummer. And this is still in the needles, but I'm bringing this up just to show you what the heck happened. Um, so this gigantic squishiness. Uh, let me make sure I'm showing you the right side. Yeah, so there's the right side. And so you can see here, the last time you saw this, I think I was down here. And so... Yeah, a lot has happened since then. Okay, so here's, here's the gist. I don't have enough yarn. This is what I've got left. I have maybe two rows left, if I am being generous with myself. Um, 
and I have approximately 16 rows left to knit. Here's the thing. Okay, so this last section, uh, that this last section that I did is this drop stitch. It's an elongated knit stitch. Um, and it is featured down here. And you can see that there's some stockinette stitching, just some flat knitting there, and then the elongated stitch, some flat knitting in between, more elongated stitch, flat knitting right in there, and then it goes into this ribbing. And that is essentially repeated up here, okay? So, without bashing, I don't like the way that Alicia Palmer writes her mystery knit alongs, um, and it's going to take a while before I do another one, because part of this is my fault. I will admit, I will take some of the blame. Part of it's the pattern's fault. I wish that she didn't do this. So, what she did is there are some written instructions and there are charts. And if I can knit from a chart, I do, because I, it just makes sense to me. I mean, I stitch, so charts are my thing. Like, I, I, I use charts all the time. Um, and so the same is true for knitting. If there's a chart, then I'm going to knit from that. Um, it just, it's logical to me. So that's what I did. I followed the chart. So what she did is she copy and pasted the chart that she had included for this clue when this was originally published, and she just copy and pasted it into this clue. Well, in the written instructions, it tells you to stop before you get to the second band of elongated stitch. It does not show that in the chart. The chart just makes you think you just keep going. You just, you complete the thing. And in the written instructions, she says something like, um, like the first line is knit rows one through something, uh, you'll end on a right side row. So I just went to town. But that is approximately it's approximately seven or eight rows worth of yarn used to do that in, there's only four, uh, there's only six rows to actually complete that, that elongated, uh, that elongated stitch band. Um, but imagine, I would have had enough because after this, there is the ribbing section again and then bind off. So I would have had enough if I hadn't done this. My ribbing section might have been a little bit shorter, but it would be done, right? I mean, it would, it would just be a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So I contemplated what the heck I'm gonna do here. Could I tank back? I could, but I'm not. Like, I'm not gonna tank back. Um, ripping out that much knitting no. I make more mistakes knitting backwards than I do knitting forwards, and I make plenty of mistakes knitting forwards, so I don't need to be dropping stitches, and no. Mm -mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another skein of yarn, because I have to, and I'm going to knit this flat knitting section here, and then the ribbing, and then the bind off. And I'm going to do as much of the ribbing as I can with the yarn that I have. The pattern says to only repeat that once, but I'm gonna do it as many times as I can eat up the yarn. I might only have one, one skein's worth in there to get in there, but we'll see. Um, this is worsted weight, and so it's a heavy weight, and my ring keeps getting caught in it. Um, so the, uh, it, it goes fast, and there's only 200 yards in a skein anyway. So, <laughs> I was so ready to have this done. I'm like, this thing is going to be a blanket, and it's going to be so warm, and I cannot wait to have it done, uh, but it's going to have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, the yarn that I'm using, by the way, it is Malabrigo Rios. 
uh, which is 100% superwash merino, uh, 210 yards, and the colorway is Sandbank. So, there's that. So I'm going to have to get a fourth skein. Mine will just be a little bit bigger than everybody else's. But I was devastated by not being able to finish that. I was so bummed. I'm like, <sighs> what I wanted to do was finish that up and then have a cast on party. I have a pile of things that I really want to start making. Um, I want to get started on my socks. There's a cowl I want to knit. Um, there's a hat or two or three that I want to start on. So I was hoping to get that done so that I could then have some guilt-free cast on party. Not going to happen. So then I was like, well, I'm just going to have my cast on party. I'm just going to do it. And then I was like, nope, can't, don't have the needles. <laughs> so I have to finish some things before I can have this cast on party because um, I needed a pair of, I needed a set of six. I just, I need needles to be able to have this cast on party. So um, I pulled out Instead, I pulled out another project that's close to finishing um, to work on and uh, finish it. Yeah. So this is my Fairy Hill 2. Um, I knit the Fairy Hill earlier this year. It is a part of Helen Stewart Shawl Society 2 collection. Um, and so I knit one earlier this year, two color with beads, the medium size, the largest size available. Uh, as as designed um, and I knit that in 12 total days 12 knitting days so my goal was to cast on a small one color version and see if I could knit it in seven days uh, to qualify for an eat sleep knit speedy crafter badge obviously that didn't happen because this was I think back in May um, and I've just now finished up so that's okay um, so what I did, this thing is super little, um, but it's very pretty. So this is Fairy Hill 2, like I said. The yarn that I used is um, Handmade and Fine Yarn Sea Silk, which is a, it's what I would class as a heavy lace weight, very light fingering weight. Um, it's not listed as such on Ravelry. It's listed as a straight up fingering weight, but it really is a little bit lighter than, than most of the fingering weights that I've used. Um, and it is 80%, no, 70% silk, 30% seaweed cellulose, um, or sea cell, as it's, as it's referred to. Um, and yeah, this was a really interesting base to knit with. Number one, silk is slippery. Um, this stuff was sli slipping and sliding all over the place. Um, I knit it at um, on the called four needles, which was a USI six four point oh millimeter, um, because if I was making the small version, I wanted to make it as big as I could, and so to do that, I needed a bigger gauge, um, because I don't care for shawlettes. Uh, if they're really small, I won't wear them. So I wanted to make it as big as possible. And so I knitted at a really big gauge. Plus it makes it a little bit lighter. It makes it really airy and really, really kind of feminine. So yeah. Uh, the colorway is rose, by the way. And here's what I absolutely love about this design. I thought that it was just with the way that I knit the other one. But as it turns out, I think it's just, it's the, uh, the method of it. I love the curl. Do you see how those ends curl? That's so pretty. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. Um, so there is a designer by the name of Hunter Hammerson. And she put out a book a couple of years ago called Curls. And it's all shawls that curl like this. So I'm going to have to get that book and knit the heck out of some of those. Um, because, uh, yeah, I just, I really, I really like the way that turned out. And this hasn't been blocked yet. Um, it will, because I, I've got to grow it a little bit. It's still too small, um, but it's gorgeous. 
And this bind off took a little while itself, but it wasn't terrible. It was maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It was a simple bind off. Just kind of zooming in on the lace a little bit. Mm, so, so nice. So, so there's that. So two finished shawls. That one was um, just under 400 yards. Very, very small. Um, so two finished shawls. Woohoo! I'm down to 10 whips. <laughs> 10. Still 10. Um, trying to get down to 4 or 5. Um, I still want to have my cast on party and I might do that on October 1st anyway. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. So stay tuned. Um, and I haven't ordered the yarn to finish up the dockside yet, but I will soon-ish. Maybe. Okay, so let's switch to the final topic and then we'll call it a day. I mean, that is books. And I have one book that I finished uh, since, we last, since we last saw each other. And that is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. Based on the recommendation of everybody and um, Danielle, I believe she said, dude, finish it. <laughs> So that was pretty much all the motivation I needed. I kept reading. And um, so really glad that I did. I'm really glad that I did. Um, for those who have the same reservations that I did about it being too similar to Girl on the Train, no, mm -mm. nope. Um, for those who are skeptical about the you'll never guess the ending, um, You'll never guess the ending. <laughs> You'll never guess it. And it's so well done. <laughs> it was really, really well done. Um, I still think about that. Like, how smart of a writer Sarah Pinborough is to manage that. Because, yeah, it was just, it was really, really a fantastic ending. Um, it makes me want to go back and reread it to see if I can pick up on it. Um, so I was about halfway through it and I filmed this little video where I was like, I figured it out. I know what it is already, you know, and I think that other people have experienced this too, where you think you figured it out and then you're wrong. <laughs> I think I said in my review, uh, Sarah proverbially, proverbially threw the book at my face. <laughs> so I was wrong. Um, and so happy to have been wrong. This book is messed up. Um, these people are messed up. And yeah, it was really, really pretty good. Um, so I've had a little bit of a book hangover since I finished it because uh, I haven't really read anything since. Um, I'm still reading The Storyteller. I'm still reading Requiem. And uh, I haven't picked up a new ebook because uh, I'm in book hangover. Um, I'm hoping to pick something up here pretty soon. Um, I want to read, really briefly, I want to read Stephen King's Bizarre of Bad Dreams in October. Um, it is a collection of short stories by Stephen King. So I thought that that would be fun. Um, either that or Dangerous Women, which is a short story collection um, that features fantasy female badasses. Um, for instance, there's a story in there about Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones that I'm curious about, um, and several others. So we'll see. We'll see what I'm going to do. Um, but for now, I'm hoping that I'll just get back to reading what I was um, and hopefully have something to recommend later. Um, but if, like I said, if you were on the fence about Behind Her Eyes, just read it. <laughs> do yourself a favor and just read it. I rated it four stars because... Um, I'm really, really critical about five stars these days. Um, I'm less inclined to, to dole that out. Uh, you pretty much have to be Harry Potter for me to give you a five star rating these days. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that. And, um, I will end it off here, I guess. I guess that's probably enough. Thank you so much for your continued support of me, of my channel. Um, thank you for all of the shout outs, 
um, either here or on Facebook or Instagram or what have you. Um, you guys are the greatest. I have another video that I may film this weekend. Uh, don't hold your breath because things happen. Um, but maybe I might do that this weekend. So until next time, I hope that you guys are well. I hope that you are stitching. And as always, be kind.